Today we're talking about how to win at life, the universe and everything. Uh, if you are a Hitchhiker's Guide to the, the Universe uh, fan. So we are going to make this a recurring theme. We're going to be talking a lot about money. Uh, and again, a lot of this information comes from two different sources that I've been uh, tuned into. One, I've been coached by Whitehall Management, Greg Stanley, who's no longer in chiropractic, unfortunately, uh, for many years. Uh, he works in the dental area these days. But his financial advice uh, was very simple, very clean, very easy. Uh, and then here recently, I've been involved with uh, on the blog with Mr. Money Mustache. Uh, definitely two things you should go check out. Uh, but these tips are going to help you both improve both your business and your life. So today, again, how to win at life, the universe, and everything. Or to make it a little less sensational, uh, we're really going to be talking about the three truths to gaining financial independence. But trust me, by the end, you're not going to think that that title is over the top. Uh, the way I see it and the way I've experienced it uh, here in the last couple of years is it is life changing. Um, it is the secret to winning that life. Uh, and the secret really is to change the game, to change the game that you're playing. So when we talk about how to win at life, um, the secret is to change the game, not to play the game that everybody else is playing. Because the first truth that comes along here is that almost everyone misunderstands their money myself included. Uh, I would say for many years in the past, but still, uh, it's still a learning process for me as well. Uh, and again, I'm sharing these things on Friday, not that I've mastered these things, just that I've been experiencing these things. And I see what it, it's going to do for me in the future, what it has done for me already. And I want to share it with you as well. So people, most people misunderstand their money. And again, it's, it's a learning process. And I'm not just talking about people who struggle to, to make ends meet. There are plenty of those out there. There are plenty of those in real life, uh, real life and chiropractic, like chiropractic is not real life. There's plenty of those all around, but I see it happen quite a bit in, in the chiropractic world. You know, I'm, I'm talking about across the country, middle class, poor, rich, people who claim to, to be money managers, politicians, uh, everybody misunderstands money. And I see it, I wouldn't say more in the chiropractic world, although there is a strange little fascination in the chiropractic world that I'll talk about here in a second. Uh, but my opinion is that money that's not being used to, to make you happier is wasted. And the thing is, that's most of your money. Most of the things we spend on money on don't make you happier. We've talked about that a few times here in the show in the past couple of weeks uh, about looking for your happiness, that being something for your goals, but also being something for you to focus your money on. The culture in this country, obviously, is to show off your wealth. Uh, the culture in this country is very materialistic in the fact that, uh, you know, every advertisement you see tries to get you to some, buy something more that you can, you know, show off to other people. You know, you can buy the sleeker car, you can buy the bigger house, you can buy the biggest boat. Uh, when really, the only thing that really matters is your happiness, right? Uh, the only thing that really happen, matters is your family, uh, happiness, your health, those things that are important to you, and yet we spend most of our money on material stuff. So, you know, can you be happy with a boat? Sure, you can, uh, but it depends on why you bought it. Uh, if you're just buying it off to show it off, uh, then it probably doesn't buy you happiness. It probably buys you misery. I have several friends here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, that have very nice boats that sit in their driveway. And as I ride my bike past their house, that boat sitting in their driveway. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a weekend, doesn't matter if it's a holiday weekend, that boat's still sitting in their, their driveway. That boat's not making them happy. That boat's making them miserable. Uh, it's a payment uh, and, and it doesn't give them the joy that they thought it was would when they bought it. It's all about controlling the amount of money you spend versus the amount of money you make. Now, last week I talked about how to get rich and I told you the way to get rich was to spend less than you make. Uh, pretty simple advice, but that's how we do it. And unfortunately, it's just not happening. The third truth that I want to talk about is that once you're free of some of that financial dependence, spending money on unnecessary stuff, you can finally feel comfortable in your work. Because again, I see a lot of chiropractors as I travel around the country who are just struggling. But the reason they're struggling is because of their spending habits, not because of their production. Now, I'm always a fan of producing more. Trust me, I'm about the launch. I'm about people producing more. But you can do both. You can produce more and still spend less. Uh, now, I just did a video yesterday about the um, shrinking to greatness in the sense that a lot of people think that when they spend less, uh, that'll change their practice and it won't necessarily. You should focus on both. 
you should focus on not spending wastefully uh, and you should focus on producing more. So make sure that you don't get me wrong here. I don't want you to shrink your practice uh, in order to spend less. Uh, I want you to spend money on the things that, that will help you grow your practice and the things that make you happy and nothing else, um, which will allow you to feel retired in practice. And that's what I want for all of my clients. Once that happens, your energy can be used towards creating happiness for yourself. Your energy can be used towards uh, your energy and your money uh, can be used towards creating happy for yourself. And, I, and hopefully you're all saying, you know, well, Dr. Scott, I love my job. Uh, I love being a chiropractor. I love going to the t- tables all day. You know, so why should I worry about having, you know, you know saving money to retire when I'm still going to be working here at the office? Uh, and again, I want you to have enough money to retire and then not retire. Let me give you a little thought experiment, if I may. If you found a million dollars, let's even let's call it a billion dollars, just lying on the street, would that change anything about you? Would you still go in the office the way you do now? I hope you would say yes. Although I can guarantee you something would change. Uh, it might just be that you want an extra day off during the week. And I hear that a lot during my, my tour as well. I'm talking to chiropractors who, who want to grow just so they can take an extra day off a week. They want to get that happiness. And yet I look at the car they're driving, the house they have, uh, the boat in their driveway, and realize, well, if you just hadn't bought those things, you could have that day off per week. Uh, and you could have happiness. And you could, you could have the things that you're looking for, but you just made some bad decisions. So it might be an extra day off during the week. It might be uh, a trip around the world that you've always wanted to take. I had one client uh, that uh, wanted to bike across the country. He just wanted enough freedom and comfort to be able to take that bike trip across the country. Those are the things that I want you to be able to have. And those are the things, again, if you spend money on those experiences, that's good. It gives you happiness. Uh, Start looking at things that don't. You may love your job, and I hope you do, but nothing can replace the freedom you feel if you gain financial independence. You know, when I was, my last couple years in practice, uh, when I had a lot going on, I had a lot of independence. I could come and go as I pleased, uh, and nothing even though I was spending a lot of money at the time, and again, I've changed those habits, but nothing can replace that feeling uh, of being able to make those decisions. That freedom is exhilarating. That freedom gives a lot of happiness. And that freedom comes by not overspending and making sure that we put money aside that allows you to make those choices. I know my biggest mentor as far as financial is concerned was Greg Stanley, and he always talked about save your age per year. Uh, So again, if you're 30, save $30,000 per year. 31, save $31,000 that year. Uh, Me at 46, I should save $46,000 this year. That was his chiropractic advice. And I think as I ran those numbers, that's very, very good advice as as you continue improving that. I think that could be beat. From what I see in chiropractic, um, even people making, I shouldn't say even, but Average practices that I see, and I don't like to go over numbers in chiropractic, but some of those average numbers could could beat that. Uh, Even with your overhead, as long as the personal savings came down, you could really improve those numbers. So um, as far as a percentage, it's tough to say because it really does depend on your lifestyle. But I do like the save your age. Uh, Let's go with that one for now. The question becomes, what do we really need to be be happy, to have a complete life? Uh, You know, again, I see not just as I tour, but also on Facebook, everybody posting all their things and uh, you know the things that they have. Do any of those give you a complete life? To me, it's a lot simpler than you think. You know, you think about what you need. You need shelter, you need food, you need companionship. That's about it. Uh, and if you no longer need to worry about anything but those three things, if you have those three things taken care of, if you've saved enough to cover those expenses for yourself for a certain period of time, there's a whole bunch of comfort there. But I see a lot of chiropractors that they don't have enough to get through next month. Uh, You know, they are literally living uh, prepay to prepay or insurance check to insurance check. uh, And they're they're worried about paying rent when they make enough money. Uh, You know, you see the numbers of what they collect monthly. And then they tell you they don't have anything left at the end of the month. I'm like, where does it all go? Uh, but when you have that money saved up aside and you know that you could retire if you want to, there's a lot of happiness involved in that. And again, you don't have to stretch it so far if you're focused just on those three things. Um, shelter, food, and your companionship and your happiness uh, and having a few experiences. So set that aside. However, the standard chiropractic middle class, what I see all day, every day, uh, that life kind of goes like, well, I mean, obviously we have student loans. Uh, we come into it with that. We get a new car. We get married. Buy a house. 
have kids, upgrade your house. Uh, you know, you hit 30, 35, 45, 55. Uh, and I've worked with a lot of those guys that are 55 or above. They still don't have any money. And I look at their production over the course of 10, 15 years, and they still haven't put any money aside. They're scrounging uh, to save even 6% of their paycheck. Now, I say 6% because that is the average. Um, because all of their stuff gobbles that up. The equation adds up to more and more fancy crap that you have, but also requires more and more effort from you to keep it up, more and more struggle from you, more and more pushing. You know, I, I hear in chiropractic, like, I don't, I don't want to feel like a salesman, and yet you're put into a position where you have to sell. If you don't sell that patient in front of you, you can't pay your bills at the end of the month because of your extravagant lifestyle. If you get into a situation where you don't have to feel that way, trust me, you sell a lot better. If you're comfortable in practice, if you're retired in practice and you don't care if that patient accepts care or not, you're going to be a much better salesperson without having to, to act like a salesperson. Uh, there's a lot less effort. There's a lot less struggle there. And, uh, you know, you're able to focus on things that you like to do, whether it be, um, you know, learning a new task or learning a new skill or something that makes you happy that doesn't cost a whole bunch of money. I, again, trust me, I've mentioned it several times. I don't think of myself as a pure minimalist. Uh, I certainly buy the things that I think help me to do the few things that I enjoy doing. Materialism as in itself, though, is quite the trap. I think you'd agree. Having those luxury products and a lot of them does not bring you happiness, uh, despite of what you know, all the, the uh, consumer uh, salespeople will tell you. So think about what's important to you, what gives you the most happiness, control that spending uh, and you're able to win at life. You're able to find it, finally get to a point where you have some comfort, you have some margin in your life. Uh, and trust me, that's more important than anything. It's just a matter of making small changes that will add up over time. How to win at life. Three simple things. Rethink the financial priorities in your life. Save as much as you can to gain your independence. So Kaylee, you ask about uh, a percentage. To me, that percentage is as much as you can. So as you shrink your office overhead to minimal while you can still produce, shrink your personal overhead to really minimal, save the rest. Uh, and then again, in my opinion, produce even more in a chiropractic setting because again, what we do is different. Uh, just a little aside here too, when I go out and do onsite evaluations and I start talking to staff, and I talk to staff about producing more, about seeing more patients and making more money, I'm always very careful to make sure that they know that, that our business is awesome. Uh, you know, we make money by helping people get healthier. It's not like we're, we're in a printing business and, and um, you know, selling paper. Uh, and I'm sorry, I have a friend who watches the show that sells paper and, and it's cool, like I, I love that, but in chiropractic, when we start to sell, uh, we're doing that by giving people more health, and that's a fantastic thing to do. So definitely produce more, and then save as much of that as you possibly can. And once you get to a point that you have comfort and you have stuff set aside, you can start making some different decisions about what makes you happy. Uh, so once you've saved as much as you can, then do what makes you happy. And again, hopefully what makes you happy is being in practice, uh, but retire in practice, as my old coach uh, Greg Stanley used to say. Get to a point that you can be comfortable. You can take off a day when you want to. Uh, the practice runs without you. Uh, and then you will have that true happiness. You'll be able to win at life. Make sure you drink good coffee.